yeah so good morning everyone so as we are discussing about the pipe culverts right so we'll continue the session uh, the second second lecture So I think uh, we have discussed about uh, you know what do you mean pipe culvert, right? So what are the different types of pipe culverts, isn't it? So low level embankment pipe culvert and uh, high level embankment pipe culverts, right? And what are the different types of the flow patterns in pipe culvert, isn't it? Uh, and it all depends on uh, length, roughness, gradients, upstream and downstream water levels of the culverts. Okay, this is how the flow pattern is always uh, depends on. Right, and what are the uh, culvert alignment? Okay, right. Uh, so culvert alignment. So we have to make sure, uh, possibly, the culvert path should always be perpendicular to the road alignment, isn't it? So maximum we have to avoid the skew culverts okay so skew culverts always complex so which makes your structure uneconomical isn't it so that is what we discussed in the previous class and one more thing is culvert entrance structures there are four different ways of uh, you know uh, culvert entrance structures so we can uh, have a culvert uh, you know structure like straight end wall so we can just construct a wall okay um, to cross the stream and there is an L end wall. So basically we construct these walls majorly to avoid the erosion of soil at the banks. Okay. Uh, so L end wall, and there is an another which one U end wall, okay, where uh, the protection work will be on uh, three sides of the culvert. And there is a, another wall, which is called a flared wing wall. Okay. So basically this wall will be constructed to avoid vertex action. Okay. So Telugu, we call it as a sudis, right? So to control that vortex actions, we construct a wall, something like a flared vans. It's like a wings, okay, inclined wings. Okay, and uh, you know, that's play also, it always depends whether the flow is a super critical or a subcritical flows. Okay, so this is what we discussed in the previous class. And I think we have started, uh, you know, this hydraulic design of pipe culverts also, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so hydraulic design in the sense the major component to design the pipe culvert is the hydraulic design okay we have to consider the hydraulical properties so majorly in that first one is uh, discharge okay based on this only we are going to decide the number of pipes and what is the size of the pipe isn't it okay uh, so this is how the you know um, hydraulic uh, properties are going to be play a vital role to design the structure okay so the different uh, streams, you know, upstream level and downstream level. So we have to see the gradients and everything. So here there is an empirical formula to calculate the discharge. I request all of you. So please note down this formula, which is very, very important. Okay, guys. So please note down this formula. Hydraulic design of pipe culvert. Q is equal to A into K root of 2 G H. Okay, Q is equal to A into K into root of 2 G H. Okay, in that what is Q? Q and M. See, at least one or two discharge. you can respond. Yeah, Q is nothing but discharge, isn't it? And what is A? Area of the pipe. Okay, so let us take, uh, you know, uh, if the pipe is, pipe is a circular pipe, right? And this is your dia. I mean, so this is your radius. Okay. And this is your dia, right? And based on this, the area of the pipe. How to calculate the area of the pipe? Pi d square by four. Okay. So d is nothing but diameter of the pipe. And z, what is g here? Acceleration due to gravity. Okay. So what is this root two h two g h m? What is this component? Velocity. Very good, very good. Velocity V is equal to 2 G H. Okay. So I think we all know discharge is equal to area into which is a coefficient, which, which is constant into velocity. Okay. So here velocity is root 2 G H. So here, because water will always flow with some velocity, isn't it? And that velocity always generates through uh, gravity of water. Okay. 
So based on that only the you know velocity will always be defined, and h is nothing but driving head in meters. Okay, as I told you, uh, you know at the upstream level, at the upstream level and downstream level, okay, the difference uh, in the levels is we call it as a head. So the driving head in meters in the absence of any data, it can be assumed as 0.25. So straight away you can take h as a 0.25, okay, to measure the discharge or to measure the velocity of water based on the driving head okay understand and the last one is k nothing but constant so this k is called a convenience factor under ma okay so please remember this k is nothing but a convenience factor so this always depends on the entry of water at the culvert point okay so it always depends on the roughness of the pipe and the length of the pipe okay so because uh, the culvert pipes usually it will be as length as uh, you know length of the i mean width of the carriage way what will be the usual length of the pipe length of the pipe will always will be equal to or greater than the width of the carriage way okay if it is one lane road or two lane road or three lane road it all depends on the carriage way width okay isn't it so this k always depends on the roughness of the pipe because uh, usually the pipe is made up of rcc reinforced concrete cement so usually it will have some roughness so that roughness and the length of the pipe will have some convenience factor okay so that k also should be calculated so please note down this k how to calculate k k is equal to root of sorry k is equal to 1 by root of 1 plus ke plus kf okay in that unknown parameters are ke and kf okay what are they what are the unknown factors here? Ke and Ke. What do you mean Ke? Emma? Ke is nothing but coefficient of head loss at entry. Okay. Why can anyone tell me why there will be a head loss at entry? So this is entry point and this is exit point. Entry. Can anyone tell me why there will be a head loss at entry? Chapal. Decrease in size of area to go. Very good, very good, very good. Why? Because uh, water is flowing with some, with 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 a more wide. Okay, so here the width will be more. So suddenly, when the water is changing its, okay, uh, I mean to say its path. Okay, so obviously here the velocity will be more. Okay, so when there is a sudden change in area cross-sectional area okay so it, it it creates some losses i think in your uh, hydraulics lab also there is an uh, experiment called uh, sudden expansion and sudden contraction which is a frictional losses isn't it so there is a side pipe sudden expansion sudden contraction frictional losses all these losses also we have to consider for calculating the discharge of the you know discharge okay so here coefficient of head loss at entry is going to be considered so, which is a 0 0.08 for bell mouthed entry, 0 0.51 for sharp edged entry. Okay, don't worry, guys. In the problem itself, definitely they will give what type of uh, mouth that your pipe culvert will have on it. Mention just sir. Otherwise, straight away you can consider bell mouth entry, which is more most popular. Okay, so bell mouth entry and the entry of the pipe will be something like a you know mouth. I mean, uh, someone opened mouth, and so you, you, you I mean, to say, uh, you can't expect the, uh, the, I mean, uh, cross section of the pipe exactly circular. Okay, the pipe will be something like this, and it's like you know, mouth. Okay, man, no allowance in the same way it will be like that. Okay, the, that is called bell mouth entry. Okay, so 0 0.08 is you have to consider 0.51 for sharp edge entry. Okay. So next one, next one is KF. KF is a coefficient of head loss due to friction. Okay. So as I told you, there will be a friction loss within the pipe. It's it's based on the length of the pipe. So the frictional uh, coefficient also we have to calculate. KF is equal to 0.0033 L by R power. I mean, I, I mean to say uh, one by third of the power. Okay. Right. So R power 1.3 right for concrete pipes where l is equal to length of the pipe in the meter 
understand here l is equal to length and r is equal to radius of the pipe okay so you can straight away consider this formula to calculate kf and these factors based on the entry you can calculate ke okay so from this you can able to calculate k and then you can substitute k here for calculating the discharge okay a is nothing but area k is nothing but constant and v velocity we can calculate based on the acceleration due to gravity into head understand so simple isn't it so with that we can able to calculate the discharge of the discharge of uh, pipe i mean so discharge of water at the uh, culvert point okay yeah so here sorry sorry guys here r is equal to nothing but hydraulic mean depth not radius d is nothing but diameter of the pipe based on the, based on that only we can able to calculate the uh, radius but here r is not a radius is nothing but hydraulic mean depth can anyone tell me how to calculate hydraulic mean depth hydraulic mean depth ela calculate chestaram hydraulic mean depth ela calculate chestaru what is the formula for that hmm anyone the hydraulic mean depth is equal to cross sectional area of the pipe by perimeter understand so based on that you can able to calculate the hydraulic mean depth okay so please note down this r is equal to area by p a is nothing but cross sectional area p is nothing but perimeter nothing but circumference okay right so that's it so this is how we can able to calculate the uh, you know hydraulic design of pipe culverts which is nothing but discharge and next immediately let's see what is the structural design of pipe culvert how to design the pipe culvert okay so here a uh, few important points so before that i would like to show you few images okay of uh, different uh, pipe culverts so let's see them yeah so let's let me show you and there are only few pics i think so is the image is visible everyone image kanipistunnam andarki one second it's loading guys andar kanipistunna image hello yes sir yeah see this is uh, uh, can anyone tell me whether it is a low embankment pipe culvert or high embankment pipe culvert low embankment pipe culvert or high embankment pipe culvert guys please answer hello ఏం కలవట్ ఇది గైస్ ఐ యూ దేర్ నో వన్ ఈజ్ రెస్పాండింగ్ హలో ఇది లో లెవెల్ ఎంబ్యాంక్మెంట్ పైప్ కలవట్ట హై లెవెల్ ఎంబ్యాంక్మెంట్ పైప్ కలవట్ట సార్ హై లెవెల్ హై లెవెల్ ఆ సి can you see the road level here see your pipe culvert is almost to the level of the road so this is a low level embankment pipe culvert okay high level embankment ante so somewhere your road should be here where there will there will be a huge slope at the embankment understand so it, this pipe culvert is almost at the road level this is completely just a formation of the road ante okay so if you, if you see the embankment this embankment is almost level of the road so this is low level embankment pipe culvert okay understand
So this is a box culvert, right? So let's see, instead of a pipe, so they will have a, you know, RCC precast structure, or sometimes you can even go with the in-situ structure also. So which is something like a rigid frame. So there will be a bottom slab, there will be a top slab, and even there will be a wall, okay? So this is called a single cell box culvert. Okay, if you see the walls, see, these two are splayed wing walls. Okay, so these walls are not in a form of U shape, right? It is splayed shape long line. Right? See, this is the triple cell box culvert. Box culvert, it is not even a pipe culvert, okay? So why this uh, one cell, two cell, three cell box culverts are designed? Why can't only one cell to allow water into, I mean, to allow water from upstream to downstream? Why we have to divide into two to three cells? Not only in box culvert, even in pipe culvert also, you can see it clearly. Instead of providing one pipe alone, so there are, see, so there are four pipes here, okay? So this is also a low level embankment pipe culvert because the road level is almost to the level of the pipe culvert. See why four, why can't only one? Why they required four to five pipes here? Induko. More discharge. Yeah, see because it, it's all based on the discharge, okay? So in this, in, you know, the problem which we are going to do also, in that problem, we can able to calculate how many pipes required, you know, to allow water from upstream to downstream, okay? So here there is a huge discharge with more velocity it comes. So definitely that water is supposed to be, okay, you know, uh, reduce its, I mean, you, you are not reducing its velocity, you are increasing the velocity by reducing its pressure. Because we all know, velocity and pressure is inversely proportional, right? So when there is a more pressure, there will be a less velocity. When there is a high pre less pressure, there will be more velocity, isn't it? Okay, so that is how the number of pipes are going to be designed, okay? So I think uh, there is one more picture. So this is also a you know minor bridge. So this is under passage. So it is not a culvert. We can call it as a under passage. So, which is something like, you know, uh, rigid framed structure. Okay, right. Let's go back to the uh, concept. So, structural design of pipe culverts. So, here, uh, let's see how to design the pipe culvert. So, here, please note down uh, which, is, which are important points. So, a pipe which is laid beneath an embankment, which is, has to sustain the load of the earth fill and the live load, which is caused by the movement of the vehicle. Isn't it? So if you want to design your pipe culvert, you have to design the pipe culvert for majorly two, two loads. End of loads, one will be the, one will be your earth pressure, the earth fill. Why? Because if you see your pipe culvert, your pipe is going to be subjected with, you know, the pressure from sides so what type of pressure it is so it is you know at the pressure or at the fill so because we have to fill the soil on both sides of the pipe right and there will be a load which is acting on pipe so which is your vehicular load okay movement of the vehicle right so by that you have to design your pipe culvert to sustain loads which is coming from the earth fill and even the live load, which is coming from the movement of the vehicles. Okay. So this load expressed per meter run on the pipe will be designed force for the pipe. So this is this load we are going to express in terms of per meter run. Whatever the load, whatever the pressure coming from the earth fill, whatever the load coming from the vehicular movement. So this load is going to be expressed per meter run on the pipe. Okay. And if this pipe, so whatever the pipe is there, right? So this pipe, we are going to consider all loads per meter length. Okay, meter length can design just Okay, so based on that, you can able to have whatever length you required. Okay, it's based on the 
based on the loads acting on per meter length run on the pipe okay so which will be design force on the pipe okay so oka meter length of the pipe ki manam anni forces in design chestam based on that your pipe dia pipe thickness everything is going to be designed okay so you can able to have the same uh, you know properties same uh, you know uh, dimensions throughout the length of the pipe okay and the supporting strength of the pipe is related to the standard three edge bearing strength which is very very important about so the supporting strength under the supporting strength of the pipe is relating with the three edge bearing strength ki relate outundanta can anyone tell me what do you mean the bearing strength bearing ante entama bearing what do you mean bearing so bearing is a place or bearing is a position i mean you know uh, element where it transfers load kada so here even this pipe will be positioned or placed on at some bearing position okay right so this is the place where it low it transfers load to the ground understand so i mean to say your pipe is going to be supported on three edge positions so that's why it can able to transfer load in three edge strength positions okay so this support strength is going to be calculated with the formula please note down this formula supporting strength is equal to strength factor into three edge bearing strength under okay so supporting strength is equal to note down strength factor into three edge bearing strength so this is how the supporting strength of the pipe is going to be calculated okay supporting strength ante uh, to what extent you have to support your pipe okay or to play, i mean to to place or to design your pipe at the location okay so it, the supporting strength is based on the strength factor into three edge bearing strength how to calculate this strength factor and how to get this a three edge bearing strength anedha chuddam okay so the strength factor is a function of the type of bedding what do you mean bedding this is what the bedding not bedding am a bedding ante you you can't place your pipe just on the uh, pcc bed okay you have to provide a proper bedding to provide your pipe culvert to sit properly okay so this is called bedding so this bedding will give the strength factor okay bedding proper ga led ankonde your pipe won't sit properly and it won't uh, you know uh, transfer loads live load and earth pressure ni proper ga transfer cheyaledu okay so that's why uh, the strength factor is uh, depends on the type of bedding and the different types of beddings untai amma so let me show you that in the next page okay so let's see here these are the different types of beddings okay so i request all of you so please note down this small table okay so which gives your strength factors based on the types of beddings see the first one is earth bedding and the pipe which you are laying okay below the pipe there will be just earth filling earth fill untundi on the earth filling you are going to place your pipe so if that is the case you have to consider strength factor as 2 okay so next one is first class bedding so there is a picture which was clearly given so this is the first class bedding see you can see it clearly the bedding was placed on left hand left side and right side of the pipe there is no bedding below the pipe kada pipe kinda etwanti bedding ledu so this is called first class bedding if if you are providing a bedding like this then your strength factor you have to consider it as a 2.3 and next one is concrete cradle bedding so it covers whole placement of your pipe see how nicely your uh, a pipe was placed and it was uh, positioned properly so this is called concrete cradle bedding under okay usually if you see major uh, you know uh, i mean to say all your uh, culverts which are constructing nowadays they are going with uh, concrete cradle bedding only okay so if you are having this then your strength factor will be 
so here please try to understand so if you are going to provide a concrete cradle bedding almost your bedding depth should be considered as 0.5 times of d i mean just add these two ante okay 0.5 times of the diameter of the pipe diameter of the what diameter of the ex external diameter of the pipe see uh, please remember capital d is nothing but external diameter of the pipe small d is nothing but internal diameter of the pipe always we ca consider capital d as your diameter of the pipe okay not uh, small d okay right so uh, this is how you have to provide the concrete cradle bedding depth right okay these are the different types of bedding sama so please try to remember and note down these uh, strength factors okay next coming to the next one which is uh, how to calculate the three edge bearing strength kada then only you can able to calculate the strength uh, this thing right so because in the formula it was clearly given supporting strength formula ante strength factor into three edge bearing strength so strength factor you will get based on the bedding and the three edge bearing strength what is the formula for three edge bearing strength please note down this formula ee formula note cheyandi andaru all of you so please note down this formula further the type of bedding is so chosen that the system satisfy the following equation so after choosing your bedding you have to make use this formula to calculate the three edge bearing strength okay. so three edge bearing strength in terms of kilo newton per meter by factor of safety can anyone tell me what is this factor of safety how much the factor of safety will be enta what is the factor of safety guys please respond what is the factor of safety here in 435 kuda form chestundi ga ralestaru please mute em evaraitha maatladutunnaro please mute those who want to answer so please unmute and answer what is the factor of safety the factor of safety is 1.5 so three edge bearing strength by factor of safety is equal to weight of the filling material okay weight of the filling material we have to calculate this weight of the filling material based on the soil uh, you know density by strength factor how to get the strength factor just now we have seen the strength factor depends on the bedding plus uh, surface live load what do you mean this surface live load it depends on the class of the load class a na class 70 ra class a na class b ra so based on the class of loading your surface live load will be defined by factor of safety what is this factor of safety again 1.5 chonde formula enta simple ga undo 3 edge bearing strength calculate cheyadaniki we are going to use this formula 3 edge bearing strength by factor of safety is equal to self weight of filling material ante self weight of soil filling material ent ikkada what we are going to fill uh, around the pipe around the pipe ma main fill chestam amma kalavatlo we are going to fill soil isn't it so weight of soil that nothing but the name antaru inga technical ga earth fill under okay so that weight we have to calculate by strength factor plus surface live load by factor of safety okay so this is how you can able to calculate the three edge bearing strength so now very importantly how to calculate this weight of filling material and how to calculate this surface live load ee rendu manaku teliyali because factor of safety i know which is 1.5 strength factor i know which is based on the bedding surface okay three edge bearing strength calculate cheyandi ee rendu parameters kavali how to calculate weight of filling material and how to calculate surface live load so now you can see two important formulas here one is w is equal to ce small w capital d square with to calculate the weight of filling material and capital w is equal to 4 into cs i into p this is to calculate the surface live load so please note down these two formulas 
guys please note down these two formulas very very important without these two formulas you can't able to calculate the three edge bearing strength without calculating three edge bearing strength you can't calculate the structural strength understand okay so every parameter is very very important okay so please note down these two formulas so let's see one by one what is ce what is w and what is capital d square okay so let me take the attendance first and then we will continue okay right so there are only 26 participants today 29 yeah 29 okay uh, let share, share my screen okay note chesaru andaru emma andar note chesara formulas Capital W is equal to C E into W into D square. Capital W is equal to 4 into C S into I into P. So please respond. Formulas note che Sarah. Hello. Have you noted the formulas? Can I continue? Right. See what is W here? Nothing but vertical external load in kilonewton per meter on pipe, which is based on the embankment material. So nothing but what is this embankment material? Soil. And C is nothing but coefficient, which is depends on the ratio of height of embankment to the external diameter of the pipe. Okay. So how to get this CE? So CE you can able to get from IS 783, 1959. So for this, you have to refer this code. And don't worry, CE value will be given in the problem itself. Okay, instead of carrying this code, don't uh, no need to carry. In the problem itself, they will give the coefficient of, uh, you know, uh, coefficient of the pipe based on the height of the embankment to the external diameter of the pipe. C value, we call it a problem is there. Okay, no worries. And W, nothing but density of the embankment material. What is the density of the embankment material? Nothing but soil density. Okay. So, basically density, manam, uh, you know, uh, uh, row to de define just some. But here it is defined with the W, small W. And capital D, external diameter of the pipe in meters. Okay. This is how you can able to calculate what is the weight of filling material. And coming to how to calculate the surface live load. As I told you, surface live load is always depends on the class of loading. Class AA, class 70R, class A and class B, right? So here, what is W? Vertical load in terms of kilometer per meter on pipe, which is owing to concentrated surface load. And next one, CS. As I told you, CS is nothing but influence coefficient. It is depending on capital D and capital H. What is capital D? Diameter of the pipe. And what is H is nothing but head. So it will be given in table 6.3. I will show you that table 6.3 now. 
and i is nothing but impact factor usually impact factor recommended for highways is 1.5 okay you can directly take 1.5 as an impact factor as i told you many times what do you mean impact factor impact factor is going to be considered based on the dynamic behavior of the vehicles why because there will be a dynamic force which exists for the moving vehicles okay for that you have to consider the impact factor and what is p p is nothing but concentrated wheel load kada what do you mean concentrated wheel load see let us take 70r vehicle what is the concentrated wheel load of uh, 70r wheel vehicle din load and the din load and the ोडी Respond what is seven hundred? Seven hundred. So seven hundred is your axial load, brother. So what will be the each tire load? Three fifty, three fifty, isn't it? So like that, there will be loads for class A, A, and class A, and class B also, right? So based on that, you have to consider the concentrated wheel load, which is nothing but P. Okay, that's it. So this is how. you can calculate these two finally to get the three edge bearing strength clear understand andar kadame inda idi the concept okay now let me show you how to get the cs values based on the capital d and capital h and here also don't worry the cs value will be given in the problem okay problem no directly c value and cs value is sir okay how they will go and from where you are going to get the values and it ikkada chuddam okay so this is nothing but influence coefficient cs see it's clearly given internal diameter in terms of mm 500 600 700 800 900 1000 and 1200 based on this your external diameter should be this much inte undali okay you can't provide external diameter as much you you know i do so it's not like that if you are taking internal diameter of the pipe as 500 go with external diameter 560 by that what will be the thickness of the pipe thickness of the pipe and the ma if the external diameter is 560 what will be the thickness of the pipe hmm? 30 cm 30 mm cm kaadu 3 cm okay 30 mm so like that 